<sighs> well, we know all good things must come to an end, but do they really have to? <sighs> I'm on my way home, finally. I'm kind of nervous. I haven't been home in 14 months, so we'll see how all this goes. Uh, but I'm leaving. I decided to go ahead and go through the path of least resistance to get home, which is straight across. So that's through Amarillo and then through Oklahoma City and then um, Little Rock and then Memphis and then Nashville. So I'm just going to take 40 the whole way to get home and I'll be staying in places off of 40 that I found that are free places to camp along the way and we'll see how it goes because there's not as much free camping on the east coast as there is on the west coast. So hopefully I'll find some good spots. <music> This was my second night. My first night I got in kind of late and just set up before dark, but this was right below Amarillo where I'm staying this night. And this was a park that was free with my America the Beautiful Pass. You really can't beat the views here, too pretty. It was also super peaceful. I was the only one here, so that was really nice to have that moment. Y'all, please forgive me. I'm awkward sometimes. I've been feral for 14 months. This is new. We're trying, and we're doing our best. No trip through Amarillo is complete until you've been to the Cadillac Ranch. I've driven past it before and didn't even know I drove past it, but this time I wanted to make the point to see it. And look at all that spray paint they use on these cars. It's dripping off, even though it's dry. I'm glad I went, but it's really nothing. <sighs> Y'all, I'm on my way home. And it's a little bit bittersweet. I thought I was going to be out on the road a little bit longer and extend my trip. I wanted to go down to the Gulf of Texas where it was a little bit warmer and come back up. Long story short, I think the better option is just at this point, I'm excited to go home. I haven't seen my house in 14 months. It's been a really long time. So this is super bittersweet for me. And Right now I'm in Oklahoma. I'm on the third day of my trip right now, um, or the third night. The first night I stayed in a little place called uh, in San John, like right on the border of New Mexico and Texas. There was a little free park you could stay in. And then the next night I stayed at a wildlife reservation in Texas that was gorgeous and it was super quiet. I was the only person there and it was just lovely. And now tonight... I am staying in Oklahoma, in Elk City, I believe, and it's raining and it's cold. And I had a genius moment because I paid $15 for a hookup at the campsite out here. And I was like, how am I going to stay warm tonight? I can warm up my camper with a blow dryer in about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I'm not right, but sometimes this is a redneck MacGyver move. <laughs> but um, yeah, I warmed up my sheets and now I'm just warming up the camper. Rupert hates it. He is not thrilled. And look at him. He's mean mugging me so bad. <laughs> Poor guy. Anyway, um, yeah, so yeah, we're just on our way home, but... This trip is not going according to plan. It's been really crummy weather. It was really pretty yesterday. I didn't get in until pretty late on my first night out. It's always like that when you're packing up 14 months of being on the road from your parents' garage. And so I had to, it, it took a lot longer than I anticipated. This, this is, I'm a maximalist that wants to be a minimalist, but I don't know how to do that. So when I go antiquing and stuff, I kind of, I, I overdid it. And so my dad, thankfully, it's still, they still have a house in Tennessee. So he'll help me bring some of my stuff very systematically back to Tennessee for me. So some of the stuff that I got while I was on the road, I'll just have to live without until further notice. But, oh well, this is, this has been fun. This has been such an awesome journey. And... Ugh, just so much to be grateful for. The people that I met along the way, they helped shape this journey in ways that I never imagined possible. And it's just been one of those stories that will live on forever. 
in your mind. Like, it will not go away. Like, this has just been so incredible, so special, and I, I could not have dreamt a better dream than the one that I lived. That's the only way I know how to put it. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. Since it's raining, I just wanted to give you a quick story time. <laughs> so today when I was leaving Texas right below Amarillo at that wildlife refuge, I caught a mouse in my mouse friendly trap because I still can't kill the little turds. I, I want to, but I can't. I just can't. I can't deal with it. So I used the mouse friendly trap and I finally caught the little turd that's been in my car for quite a while and I've been baiting the mouse friendly trap. It's not gone in there and it's been leaving evidence. It's been in there every day. I've been vacuuming and cleaning it out. It's awful. Like having a mouse in your car is the absolute worst, but that is part of road life sometimes. Unfortunately, that is part of road life. I caught it. I waited until I was done packing up the campsite in the morning because I didn't want to have the possibility of it making its way back to me before I was ready to pull it out. I got everything done, dumped my trash at the little trash uh, place that they had for it, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to walk as far away from the camper as I can. Dropped the little turd out. He looked at me. I looked at him. <laughs> He started to run at me and I was like, what is happening? So I stuck my foot out and I kind of sort of punted him. I'm not as hard. Like I didn't try to kick him, but it was more like a defensive mode. And I kicked him not hard, but like nonetheless, I, I kicked the mouse because it jumped at me. <laughs> and then it looked at me and I looked at it and I'm like, ah, and it's like, ah, but then I'm like, trying to scare it and I'm like go on go that way and it kept running at me and I was like what is wrong with this mouse so I took off running towards my car and I was like that little better not be chasing me and so I hop in my car and it was like it was like something out of an action movie <laughs> I don't think I've ever moved that fast in my life but I was like this damn mouse better not get back in my car because next time it won't be a mouse friendly trap if I find more evidence so we'll see <laughs> I've been at this pretty decent park. It was $15 a night. I had a plug-in, so I let my battery charge since there's no solar really to be had right now. It's been overcast. And they had showers here, which you had to press the button every two seconds, literally, to keep the shower going. But at least it was a hot shower and I'm clean. But I've got about maybe three or four days before I get home. I'm just taking my time getting across. I'm in Oklahoma right now. And... I'm ready. I'm ready to be home. When I think when your journey ends and you know it's over, you I don't know, it's just you're done. You're ready to be there. So that's where I'm at and we're working our way home. My brother and his girlfriend are having some trouble on the Oklahoma Arkansas border. They've seen quite a few crashes. They told me to hold off going through there, so I'm going to be very cautious as I travel through and um probably stop uh, maybe about 50 to 100 miles shy of the Oklahoma Arkansas border. <laughs> it took me a second, but yeah, so that's my plan for today. I'm going to just drive about three and a half hours to my next destination and hang out and see what happens. Rupert's not happy about being over there all by himself. It is cold with wet hair. I hope I don't get sick. looks cold doesn't it got my cat doing his thing hunting got this beautiful thing hi baby we are right on the water for free in Oklahoma not too shabby I ain't gonna lie, going home is depressing. It is cold. My camper got soaked driving through the rain the other day, and then I drove through the rain a little bit more yesterday, and everything was soaked again. It's coming through the front windshield. So that's where I have the floor damage that I'm gonna be fixing as soon as I can get the total boat epoxy back to my house in uh, Tennessee and get that worked on. 
long story, I, after 14 months on the road, I overbought, I have way too much stuff for a maximalist minimalist. <laughs> I have so many things that my poor dad is stuck bringing back to Tennessee for me because I just, 14 months on the road is a really long time and I had a home base, so I just kept bringing stuff to their house that I liked or I enjoyed and now I'm waiting on it because my weight capacity in my car, I can't bring it home. But man, this has not been a fun trek home. Everything's wet, everything's gross, everything's cold. And I was gonna go down south, but then I was like, well, I guess it's time to get back to reality. And this cold winter, wet, nasty East Coast stuff is everything that I dislike about the East Coast is the cold, damp wetness. It like gets down into your bones and I just, ugh. Ugh, a winter of that. It's kind of taking the wind out of my sails on the way home. I mean, I have a lot to look forward to. I'm so excited to see my friends and so excited to like get home, figure out what's going on there and, you know, just be an active participant in the other life that I created for myself before I took this trip. So, um, It'll be interesting going home after this amount of time and figuring it all out again. I don't know if I have a job when I get home. I don't know. I don't, there's so many unknowns and that to me is exciting and scary as hell and it promotes growth for me and I'm a weirdo and I always set myself up this way. So we'll see what happens. I mean, life's a journey and I'm definitely living it. So it's. Not the easiest, not the hardest. Something smells. Okay. Whew. It always scares me when I use this little stove because it, um, yeah, you just never know because it is so close to the cat bed, but there is not even a tinge of heat on that bed. So anyway, I'm excited to get home. I'm excited to for this whole journey to reshape itself into what it's going to be. So we'll <laughs> see what that looks like. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Where's your toy? Everything's cold and wet and gross. And this is what we wake up to. No sunshine. I found a little free park on the almost border of Arkansas, Oklahoma. It's past Oklahoma City, so we're about 30 to 40 minutes from the border of Arkansas, so I'm about eight hours from home, and at this point, with the way the weather is, I'm just trying to check on through and get there. This has been, ugh, ugh. Anyway, uh, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> I just got to my next location. Look at my camper. Oh, <laughs> oh, the East Coast is real, man. Ugh, all that mud. This cold, wet East Coast. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> almost home. I'm about four and a half hours from home. I'm going to get set up here for the night. When I do get home, I want to get home kind of early so that I have time to unpack everything before I retire for the evening and assess the house because the house is gonna require probably some attention after not having anybody in it for 14 months. I was really hoping to enjoy the journey home just as much as I enjoyed the rest of my journey, but it's been just this weather so dreary. We're in that East Coast weather and uh, anyway, I stopped because I do not feel like cooking. It's just too cold. I got some Subway. I'm not a huge fan, but it was quick and easy and probably, I don't know if it's less bad for you than some fast food, but it was something and I needed some, some sustenance. I have, I have stuff to cook. I just am not in the mood to cook and I don't know. It's just, it's been reality sinking in and I am not a fan of reality <laughs> but we create our own reality so I am going to try and still make the best of this on the last little bit home and I'm only four and a half hours away from Nashville but I stopped here because it was about eight hours out this morning 
And I thought about making it all the way tomorrow and I've been stewing over the idea of it, but at the same time, I'm like, when I get home, it's going to need some attention and things are going to be dusty. So I need to do some cleaning. I need to get my car and my camper cleaned out. If I'm going to leave it sitting in the driveway, I don't want to leave stuff sitting out and exposed in my vehicle. And yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of anxious. I feel like I'm starting a whole new life over again. And I've been thinking a lot in the car and I know this is kind of like dreary drab content compared to what I usually create, but it's real. This is, this is life, you know, and I'm heading back home and I just, I've had so much time to sit here and think in the car of like, what am I going to do next with my life? I don't know. I don't know. And that's the scary part and the exciting part at the same time, because I can make it whatever I want it to be. You know, I can go back to the same job that I had previously if they'll take me. I still don't know that yet. I can do something new, which I don't know what that new is yet. You know, and that's the beauty of it. Life is so uncertain and it's so fun. And you just have to find the, the path of least resistance and do the fun things. And it'll lead you down the path that you're supposed to go. This trip was in incredible and it would not have been as incredible had I planned every little detail of it had I mapped out every place that I was gonna go what I was gonna do I'm the type of person that the willy-nilly free f whatever fall that works for me it doesn't work for everyone I do think that dreams are possible for everyone though I I do I truly believe that because I was laid off from my job in 2018 before I started building this momentum to get to where I've gone. And the only reason I did it is because I believed I could. And if I ever stopped believing that I could, I wouldn't have done it. Now we're just going to hang out for the rest of the evening and, <laughs> um, Make sure Rupert and Charlie have plenty of exercise. I don't know where Rupert, he's on the other side of the camper. But make sure that they have plenty of exercise for the next little bit. And then we're going to call it an early night. And then I'll decide whether to get on the road early in the morning. Or try and book another place that's maybe like four hours from here. Maybe three hours from here, maybe like an hour and a half from Nashville. That way I can get back at a decent time and really clean up the house and do what I need to do there. This is a big life change. I'm going to miss the road. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be working as diligently as possible to figure out what the next dream looks like because I don't know if it's another road trip or not. I'm not sure yet. And th there's so much fun. It's just you can create whatever you want and we'll see what we create. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to follow along with me on this crazy journey. There's more to come. I'm not sure what it's going to look like yet because, you know, when one thing ends, there's always another thing that starts or grows or whatever. And I'm sorry, my camper is so trashed. It's embarrassing right now. <laughs> Don't even look in there. Uh, but it's been wet. Everything's wet. The front got soaked. I've had water from the pressure of the wind when we've been driving down the interstate that kind of pushed through the window and soaked the whole front, um, the whole front bench. And so now I know where the water damage is coming from on the floor because that's in the same area. There's been water everywhere and it's just been, ugh, everything's wet. I just want to be home and dry it all out and figure out the next chapter. So thank you guys so much for following along. I really hope to see y'all down the road. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to like and subscribe and y'all take care. I'll see you next week.